I'm not Hercules, so what do I know? No, you are you are not Hercules. Um, no, I I have too much of a pasta belly to, <laughs> to be <per> Hercules. <laughs> um, what I will say is is that um this is gonna be the first uh bullshit segment that that we've we've started doing where we take the bullshit that we talk about. And put it out as like an actual sort of segment that you can listen Ooh, to if you just want to hear. Exciting. Yep. So for those that are I like listening, that we refer to these sections as segments, as though they're like part of a citrus fruit. Yeah. Well, do you know what? Um, I just thought it sounds formal, even though we are the most informal couple of idiots mm-hmm. uh, life has ever managed to fart out. And um, I'm drinking coffee that's gone cold. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> but anyway, so let me spin the the fabled wheel of 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 bull shite. Um, woo! Football between Scotland and football. England. Yes, football happened, didn't it? I watched it. Yeah, it was a fucking boring match. <laughs> <laughs> My right, I, I was. I've done some thinking about football, and I've come up with a conclusion. Um, football as a game is extremely well designed. The point system is very well designed. The rules are a good balance between intricate and simple. I I think that it's an interesting game as a concept because it has the idea of like such and such a person has strengths in such and such an area and such and such other people have strengths in different areas. And so it's about balancing the people that you have on the team to make an all-rounder team or a very attack-heavy team or whatever it might be. Yeah. And there's also an element of chaos in the fact that one of your um, players could just like start vomiting on the pitch who fucking knows i think it's a it's a very well designed game but i don't like like the hooliganism and the intensity that comes with it yeah people that are like oh i will support this football team forever until i die yeah i will get drunk and fight people in a pub over this football team it's like mate come on now i know you've you've got like a you've got a wife and kids back home <laughs> do you not think you should be over this <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah i mean well i uh, it happened on on Friday, um, the mm. the the match between uh, Scotland and England in the in the Euros. And by the way, this is the I think probably the second time that I've spoken about football, which Ooh, yep. is really fucking irksome. I don't want to have to I don't want to have to see this in the news. I don't want to have to talk about this shit. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So I was on the train down to London, and uh, on the Thursday, and there was a oh god, yeah, of course you were, yeah. There was a lot of fucking football fans on the trip, and it was like they weren't they weren't doing anything they weren't doing anything like bad. And see, when I got off the train, like it was, I hate to say it, but I felt like a sort of weird <laughs> sense of belonging with these absolute <laughs> fucking idiots going, "It's coming home, it's coming home." It's like you're in another country, mate. So where is it coming? Where is it coming home to? You know? Um, yeah, but. I, I I really liked the reactions to because it was for those for those that didn't watch it it was nil nil, uh, and everyone in Scotland treated that as an absolute resounding victory <laughs> that must be celebrated until yeah, the end yeah. of time, and people in England uh, on the whole were just like ah it was you know well, there you go, um because I know that I know that uh, Scotland like compared to England doesn't have a very good football mm-hmm. team so I, I think like especially when i went down to london the people that i spoke to were rather surprised by scotland's performance yeah um so i mean i've no idea what that means for the for the grand scheme of things um but um, well, uh, would you like me to explain it to you yeah with my poor understanding of the way it works yeah go on I think it's essentially a tournament system, but there are too many participants for it to be a basic tournament. So instead they have groups of teams, and then those teams battle it out to move on to the next round, and so on and so on, until eventually you get a winner. So Scotland and England just so happen to be in the same group. Um, And I think the way it works is, I think it's three points for a win, two points for a draw, one point for a loss. So... After each match, a point will ha- a team will have a point score that gets updated, and that will determine the number of points they have at the end of that group session or whatever. <laughs> After all the group's matches have played, that number of points will determine whether or not they move on or not. Right. Um, that That's how it works, I think. I see. Okay. I still don't really understand it, but, you know, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was ever so strange because it was this Scottish commentator. Clearly, because we watched it on ITV, so the ITV coverage was like, um, clearly, um, they didn't want to fork out to broadcast it separately in Scotland and England. Yeah. So they got like an English commentator and a Scottish commentator who clearly weren't very happy to be working <laughs> with each other. And um, they were like, oh, um, every, every now and then England would get like a corner of free kick. And the Scottish um, commentator would be like, oh, they didn't deserve that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, no. And then the, it, the exact opposite would happen when the same thing happened to Scotland. Yeah. It's, like, it's just bizarre. I do I do like a sort of Scottish commentator's voice because it always mm. sort of sounds like, and here we are back at the game and we have multiple, uh, we have multiple sort of strategies being played out before us. And, uh, oh, here we go. And uh, football name number one has been given the ball and he is moving into the halfway zone. And it's like that really... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Like Every every football commentator sounds like a guy who's like in his mid-40s and like just really is struggling to keep his eyes open when he's watching. I think that's because they are. <laughs> I think that's because that, that what you just described is the demographic of football <laughs> commentators. Like, it was... Um, it's ever so strange because I think it was quite a big deal recently that um, an ex... Um, I think it was the the female England football team. Um, a player that used to play for them became a commentator fairly recently for like I think it was Sky News or Sky Sports. Or I'm going to be honest with you, Dan. This I'm pulling this out of my ass. This is like fourth hand information, but like I'm pretty sure that happened. And she was there during the Scotland v England um, Euros. She was like pitch side. Yeah. Um, and it's quite stark to see like the Sky Sports team, and it's like half a dozen middle-aged men and her it's really strange <laughs> like it's it's bizarre to have such a, a singular demographic that you go for as your commentators it's weird yeah um yeah i mean it's just it's just a bizarre it's such a bizarre thing that that that, that this a uh, sport is so sort of fervently defended and fervently attacked on behalf of um mm. do you know i saw i saw like it was quite funny, but like, also at the same time, I was sort of embarrassed to be um, from Scotland. I saw um, a, a large group of, of uh, uh, Scottish gentlemen in, in London uh, mm. at, at, at the statue of uh, William Shakespeare. And all of what? them in... Why is com- it in London? <laughs> I'm sure it was in London. Wasn't he from Stratford? So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It probably was in London. But I'm saying, who erected a statue of Shakespeare in London? Whose decision was that? Oh, I don't know. Some some, some <laughs> fucker. Um, should have stayed in Stratford, because then it wouldn't have ever... This wouldn't have ever happened. Uh, they were all oh, chanting okay. in unison, um, you're just a shite, Rabbi Burns. Uh, <laughs> Rabbi Burns. Robert. I think Robert Burns. Yeah, Robert the Burns. Poet. Yeah. Okay. The way the way Scottish people pronounce it is Rabbi Burns. Um, okay. And I'm um, sure if Robert Burns was, was alive, he'd be like, "Can you please stop mispronouncing my name, you bunch of assholes?" <laughs> <laughs> I imagine someone someone quite as literally focused as Robert Burns, he probably would be like, "No, I'm Robert Burns, <laughs> and I'm nothing else." Yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I like I, I like Shakespeare. Call him Bill Shakespeare. I really like Shakespeare. Shakespeare was a was a was a very intelligent uh, man so to see you know my countryman uh sc- <laughs> screaming yeah just uh, yeah, 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 like that and that's a mm. horrible glaswegian vernacular i was like oh my god um uh, i mean i have no strong opinions either way about shakespeare um <clears throat> i don't think i don't think i'm familiar enough with robert burns's work to to criticize yeah, he was a praise. poet and shakespeare was mm. a poet but he wrote about a million plays as well mm. Um, I mean, I, I, poetry is one of those things I struggle to appreciate, I think, because it's, um, there's this really interesting quote, I forgot where I heard it from, it might have been a book that's not at all to do with art, but they said, um, it's pointless trying to go up to a, a piece of art, if it's a sculpture or a painting, or whatever, and say, okay, so what does this mean in words? Because if it meant something in words, you would have said it. Yeah, true. So, I always think, is it is poetry not sort of self-limiting in a funny way? I, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a strange thing, because what the connotations a certain word might have for um, the poet might be completely different to the connotations a certain word might have for the the reader. Yeah. So you're making a subjective sort of piece of art when you want to be expe- sort of saying this one particular point of view. I don't know. I've never I've never seen the appeal of poetry. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm wrong. Maybe poetry is objectively good and I'm just thick. But I don't know. I'm not. I've never been a huge poetry fan. No, I've never li- I've never li- read a poem. And been like, oh my god, what is, that is amazing. 
I mean, yeah. I've, I've never read a poem and thought it was better than an equivalent piece of prose. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that you would probably have... To, I think poetry is one of those things that you would have to like, study in order to appreciate, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. if anyone just read The Great Gatsby without actually mm. like, sort of, you know, trying to think about what what it means and what the symbolism is, I think they would just be like, wow, these people are fucking awful. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you, I think it's the same with of mice and men. You'd be like, "God, that book's over quickly." <laughs> that big guy just killed a lady. That was that was a bit weird. Yeah, no, definitely. You you wouldn't you wouldn't care about it. Yeah, but um, yeah. So that's uh that that was my bit of bullshit mm. for the week. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. My only thing about my only remaining qualm with football at the moment is that. It's frustrating that the economy is reopening starting with football, which yeah. is perhaps the worst place to start that. <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's all well and good saying, um, like, there's all these laws about pubs. Like, you have to be sat down in a pub and you have to be eating as well as drinking or you can't sort of move around in the pub sort of thing. Um, but then also there's people crowding around outside Wembley and it's like, oh, there's 6,000 people in this tiny little square. Yeah. Um, and now if, if one of them's got COVID, they all will have by the end of the night. Mm-hmm. So it's, well, what's the point in, in, in playing it that way? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's... Yeah, I do. It's, it feel, yeah, you either go with a, a, a sort of a a proportion-based reopening or a completely random happenstance-based reopening. And it's the happenstance one is what Boris seems to have gone with in his infinite glory and wisdom (laughs) rather than a okay well let's just regardless of what you're doing whether you're in a theater whether you're going to watch football whether you're in a pub whatever you're doing you can only have these set of rules to follow as long as you follow these rules do what you like surely that would be a more sensible way to do it and say okay well we can open theaters a bit slowly or we can do this we can do that no definitely i mean i think that there is a sort of greater leniency to football uh, when it comes to like what's allowed insanely frustrating yeah it's like you know, um, what was it? Uh, the the um, the march, uh, the 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 feminist march. I can't remember where it was in London. Like the the huge police presence that was there, and the and like the number of arrests that took place, and it was a it was a vigil, and it was like it was so overly sort of. Uh, oh Christ! Yeah, I remember that. It was it was about the 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 sort of recent killing of of a of a woman by a police officer. Yeah. And then there was just this overwhelming police presence. And you think, well, can you not see the irony there? Yeah. Can you not see how that maybe is a bit fucked? And then like, it was either, it was either like, just before or like, very shortly after, there was a huge football march. Um, like, and police weren't like, intervening. They were like, sort of ex- escorting, which is like, I mean, th- just proportionally, how, th- how those two things, like, how can you, you know, justify... The sort of different measures of response, when one mm. erupted in fights over men kicking a fucking ball around, and the other was something that's actually really fucking important. And yeah, exactly. You know, it um, um, yeah, I mean you're completely. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I you know. I'm not having a go if you like football and all that, and you get into it, and it's your thing, and it's your passion. I'm not having a go, but it's just like proportionally, it's really it's ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um. Ah, well. It's one of the one of the no. I, I completely understand what you mean. It's it's um, the things we see in life influence the way we live our lives, yeah. and like if you see on if it's, even if it's EastEnders or something, if there's a lesbian couple in one of the houses and you think oh then there's kids watching and you think oh well the kids must just know oh well, that's acceptable then so to see like it's okay in times of pandemic for people to um go to the football and spread COVID around and all go and do some heavy drinking. And, oh, it's just, and it just, it frustrates me to see such bizarre hypocrisy yep. of like, um, oh, well, you can kneel if you want to, to be against racism rather than shouldn't we all just be against racism? Yeah, definitely. Should that not be a default standpoint? <laughs> yep. Oy. No, it's just, it's, it is, it, you know, you're allowed to go and trash George Square, but you can't, you know, stand mm. at a, a vigil for, for a woman who was, I know, who I was know. killed. Um, but life is shit, so. <laughs> 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 you say, you say the way, the, the way we, uh, the things we see influences our lives. That's why I'm a miserable fuck. Um, but there you are. That was, uh, that was the first, uh, bullshit segment. Mm, mm. And, uh. 
Yeah. It was a bit rambly, but that's the whole point, I suppose. It is. Yeah, so thanks, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Yeah.